Ever wondered who laid the foundation for the tragedies that keep us on the edge of our seats today? Well, journey back with me to around 525 BCE, to the birth of Aeschylus, the first great tragic poet. Picture a young Aeschylus, stepping into the world of drama, eager to shake things up. And shake things up he did. Aeschylus introduced dialogue into his plays, creating a dynamic exchange between characters that was unheard of before. He gave us the tragic boot, the Cothurnus, and the mask, iconic elements that we associate with drama even today. And he took violence off stage, letting our imaginations fill in the gaps. But Aeschylus was not just an innovator in the world of drama. He was also a soldier, fighting in the Persian War, his experiences on the battlefield shaping his tragic poetry. He excelled, not only as a poet, but showcasing remarkable expertise in dramatic composition and theatrical innovation. How often do you come across a warrior who's also a poet? Aeschylus was precisely that, a soldier in the Persian War and a revolutionary poet. He fought valiantly in the battles of Marathon, Salamis and Plataea. These were not just mere skirmishes, but epic confrontations that shaped the course of history. But Aeschylus was not only a man of action, he was also a man of words. Inspired by his experiences in the war, he penned a tragedy about the Persians. In his hands, the enemy was not a faceless horde, but a complex society with its own hopes, dreams and fears. He humanized them, gave them a voice, and in doing so, gave us a window into a world lost to time. His play was not just a recounting of battles fought and won, but a poignant exploration of the human condition. Aeschylus didn't just fight the Persians, he brought them to life on stage. What happens when pride meets ambition, and the gods are disregarded? This curious question takes us straight into the heart of Aeschylus's classic tragedy about the Persians. A tale that captivates us with its dramatic twists and turns, and the timeless themes of pride, ambition, and divine retribution. In the Persian capital, the court is a flurry of anticipation. King Xerxes, fueled by vengeance and hubris, rallies his troops to conquer all of Greece. He dreams of avenging his father Darius's humiliating defeat at Marathon. The stage is set and the Persian king is ready to write his own history. But as we all know, pride comes before a fall. News of the Greek victory reaches the court and it strikes like a thunderbolt. Athens, the city Xerxes dreamed of conquering, stands evacuated. The Persians are tricked into a naval battle in the narrows of Salamis, an Athenian stronghold. The grandeur of the Persian fleet crumbles and Xerxes tastes the bitter flavor of defeat. But the tragedy does not end here. On land, the Persian troops fall like dominoes before the Greeks. Xerxes, once the mighty king, retreats with the remnants of his army. The Persians, once invincible, are shattered, their dreams of conquest, now a pile of ruins. In their despair, they summon the ghost of King Darius, hoping for counsel, for solace. But the ghost delivers a harsh truth. They are the architects of their own downfall, their pride, their ambition, they disregarded the gods, and now they pay the price. Through this tale, Aeschylus explores the destructive power of unchecked ambition and pride. His characters, once powerful and revered, are brought low by their own actions. Their fate is a stark reminder of the ancient wisdom. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The voiceless heaps of slaughtered corpses eloquently show that no human should puff up inflated thoughts. In Aeschylus's world, insolence, once in full bloom, produces fields ripe with calamity, reaping a harvest of sorrow. A poignant reminder that in the grand scheme of things, in Aeschylus's world, pride and ambition can lead only to calamity and sorrow. How does Aeschylus's legacy live on today? Well, his influence on drama and literature has been profound, and his status as the father of tragedy is undisputed. His pioneering use of dialogue, masks, and the tragic boot, known as Cothurnus, has shaped the very essence of tragedy. His rule of having violent acts take place off stage, leaving the gruesome details to the audience's imagination, has been a guiding principle in theatre. Aeschylus's works, filled with powerful messages about pride, ambition, and the human condition, continue to be studied and performed today, speaking to their timeless relevance. 
His play, The Persians, for instance, remains a riveting tale of hubris and downfall, holding a mirror to society's past and present. So the legacy of Aeschylus endures, not just in the annals of drama, but in the collective consciousness of humanity. In the words of Aeschylus, it is not the oath that makes us believe the man, but the man, the oath. And Aeschylus, through his works, remains a man we can believe in. Thanks for joining. Please don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and hit that bell for more updated content. Also, your comments and feedback are always welcome, if they are good. Signing off from Curio Nexus.